Good evening and welcome to On Point with Ellen Whippy Knight, where we talk to successful women and men of Fiji, wherever they may be. This evening, I am so excited to be joined by the Honourable <coughs> Linda Tambuya, the Opposition Whip and Member of Parliament. How are you going there, Linda? Thank you, Ellen. Bulavinaka, namaste and foexia Fiji. I'm holding up all right, Alan. I just came straight from the office, but this is so nice to, to be able to sit down and have a chat well, with you. Well, you know, I would have said that you'd come straight from a fashion shoot or something, because, <laughs> you know, you're so always so immaculately dressed, and, and, and yet we're not going to talk about fashion today. Well, not very much, though. Well, but I mean, but just, you've, just, been, just, you've been a role model with that, Alan, oh, you know, being the you. fashion queen and, uh, you know, a, a pioneer in Fiji, and I'm, I'm very grateful uh, to have this opportunity. Thank you. Um, let, let's go back and just talk about something I really want to know about since we're on the subject of fashion and we might just hit the nail on the head of it right now. I was sitting in Sydney one day and then, you know, I uh, came up, saw the papers and um, started ringing my office and saying, is, is this actual fact that I'm, you know, reading this in the newspapers? And it was a comment that was made, um, you know, about your presentation and your dress uh, that I thought was uh, as they were saying inappropriate, I thought inappropriate and <coughs> unnecessary. And it has something to do with you showing your knees. What was that incident again? Well, I'm showing my knees now, so yes, I hope you I'm are. not you cover it up. I'm uh, just uh, breaking any, you know, any uh, dress code in, yes. in, in, in this studio. But really uh, what had happened was it was my maiden speech. It was my right. first time yes. in Parliament. And that morning, uh, my daughter, my 19-year-old daughter, she helps me um, with my wardrobe. Mercedes? So, yes, Mercedes. And she was like, Mama, uh, you've got to wear this dress. You know? And uh, I looked at it and I said, uh, I love white. Mm. White is the color of uh, solidarity for, uh, for women, for the suffragettes who have mm. gone before us and have uh, given up their time and their life and fought uh, for the right for women to vote. Mm. And so white was uh, the natural choice. And the style of dress, uh, you know, I it's what a lot of us women wear every day. Mm. It's, uh, you know, um, corporate, it's professional, but also a power dress. And that's uh, where I was coming from in terms right. of presenting myself in Parliament. Right. Now, when I went to Parliament that day, there was absolutely no issue of uh, the um, appropriateness of the dress. It was uh, to parliamentary dress code. If uh, there was anything otherwise, I would have been called up on mm. it. But it was appropriate for the occasion. Um, the event was not a cultural or religious event. So appropriately dressed in Parliament is simply not inappropriate. So right. it met the dress code. Yes. yes. I was quite surprised because when I saw the dress, I mean, it's what the modern woman yes. would be wearing. Yes. And it doesn't matter what culture you're in, as far as I'm concerned. Yes. Um, you know, and I, I just like women who dress well, appropriately. I thought it was a fabulous dress and I thought it was a little bit insincere basically because women should be supporting each other mm -hmm. and that was the least of anybody's worry on such an important day for yes. you, for the people of Fiji, to have someone comment on your dress. Yes. Now the, the long and the short of it was did it have any, were there any repercussions of that? Did it just go away? Well, no, I mean, it just went away. It was news for, you mm. know, about a week or two. It was trending on social media. Right. Uh, but my uh, party leader was supportive of it. He didn't yes. think there was a problem with it. It was actually the women in my party that raised the issue that it yes. was inappropriate. Yes. And so you did tackle, um, you know, a very important issue about women, uh, supporting women in yes. politics. And I can tell you that, uh, you know, women in politics generally, um, it's a very competitive environment. And, you know, it's, it's an, it's, it's a natural uh, instinct, I guess, to uh, be territorial, uh, to be protective, uh, to be uh, intimidated by other women that come into politics. And so I certainly challenged the status quo as different mm. because the, the other women in parliament all wear the suli ra. Mm. Um, I and I think just each to his own. I mean, that's absolutely. Fine. And, and yes. the, the point, though, is, is are you doing what you told your constituents and what you told your, the people who voted for you, are you doing your job? Absolutely, and to the best of my ability, yes. um, you know, so far I've continued to have that support base 
space, uh, you know, and I raise the issues that mm. uh, from, uh, you know, from community level that mm. are important to our nation. And I will continue to do that. I mean, it was disconcerting at the beginning yes. that uh, it came from uh, women. From uh, within. Well, from within uh, my party. And I but suspect, yes, it was within your own party. Yes, it was. Uh, at a time like that, at uh, such a poignant time of the, the uh, elections, and the results of the elections of yes. Fiji, you know, yes, it all turned out very well. But to have to throw a, you know, something into the fire that was mm. so unnecessary, mm. uh, I think is what why people, uh, you know, read it with such angst yes. and disappointment. Because I saw all the comments on Facebook because it was totally unnecessary. But I've got to congratulate you. You know, you came out Thank of that you, very Anna. well. Um, it hasn't affected your, your style and it shouldn't affect your style. And I think uh, what you've done is you've risen above that uh, you know, I, I love what um, Michelle Obama said. When they go low, we go high, and I think you did just that. Thank um, you. It is your natural style, and and I think basically what will happen from here is that people will just not worry about it anymore and let you do your job, which is what you're doing now um, as the opposition whip. And really interested to know exactly that transition that you've had from law school to uh, your first job in the DPP overseas for a little while, then back to Fiji, and here you are. So I think what we'll do is we'll take a break, we'll come back, and we'll see you on point with Ellen Whippy Knight, talking with Linda about her career in politics as a female. Welcome back. You're on point with Ellen Whippy Knight, and you were sitting here talking to the wonderful Linda Tumbuya, who is a member of parliament and the opposition whip. Very interesting transition for you. And I, and I think it's quite historical because there haven't been very many women in politics in Fiji. Now we have 10 women, five in the opposition, five in government. Yes. And, and we have you sitting in the middle there. You came in as the, from the leader of the People's Democratic Party, and then you moved into a role which raised a few eyebrows, no doubt. And there was cer you know, certainly um, a, a lot of banter about that. Um, and there was another storm that you weathered very well. To be at where you are now with Sidelpa as the Member of Parliament, uh, the opposition whip, and the other thing is, that was most, um, su not surprising, but you know, quite uh, astounding for you, was that you actually got the fifth highest vote in the nation during the elections and the highest vote for women. Yes. How do you get to that point and that stage? Thank you, Alan. I mean, like you mentioned, I was the leader for the People's Democratic Party. And during the time before the elections, uh, we as leaders were talking to each other about uh, possibly working together to then contest the elections, uh, you know, against the government, against Fiji First. And, uh, you know, we were all talking and then it uh, really it just took... was about forming a coalition. Yes, yes, uh, which under the laws only allows um, for one party to sit out the elections and you move into that party to be absorbed as a candidate. So, you know, it really took a woman leader. We were the only ones yes. that did this with Sadelpa, and there was uh, talks with the other leaders, but it didn't eventuate. Mm. And it resulted in a success because, yes, we may have lost the elections, but we uh, took six seats away from uh, Fiji First. Yes. And, you know, I'd like to attribute that success because of that, because we joined forces and, you know, unity is what it will take to mm. be able to work together to achieve a common purpose. Mm. And yes, the transition from that, now I'm in Sadelpa as the opposition whip. Yes. You know, uh, it's what a role. What does that role actually entail for yes. those who may um, <coughs> not understand, you know, like not very many of us do, uh, all the, the, the little positions, yes. but the most important positions mm. in, in government. And like the opposition whip, that's yes. a, an interesting title. Yes, well, uh, in the um, standing order, you see the rules of parliament, it really only recognizes two positions, which is the leader of opposition and the whip. And the role of the whip is really what it says. It's to whip our members uh, to attend meetings, to be able to be uh, communicate better with uh, parliament staff mm -hmm. and the speaker. So I am the go-to person. I am the only liaison between parliament and the speaker and my members of parliament. Right. And so uh, that 
that's the role. And so, yeah, as a woman, as yes, a younger person remarkable. in the party, um, it is it takes uh, you know a lot of wisdom and a lot of patience, but also uh, being able to work with uh, you know uh, twenty one members in in my caucus, and uh, it is. Um, uh, a challenge that I've taken on. Uh, you I know, think it's a not huge challenge because yes. you're the only second woman mm. to hold that position. Yes. And I think it was Sanaina Rondrondra that was. Um, uh, Salote Rondrondra. Salote, I'm so yes. sorry. Was in, in the position first, but they've yes. never really had an opposition whip who was a female before, have they? Correct. No, this is, this is the second time now in this, in right. this term. Yeah. What do you think has changed in Fiji politics? Um, in the political world of Parliament, when you've got ten women all of a sudden in Parliament, yes, and and varying ages, you mm -hmm. know, because you're probably the youngest, uh, one of the youngest women yes, in, I am in one Parliament, of the youngest, and holding yes. Yes. such a position. Yes, um, in the corporate world, we say that there is a glass ceiling mm -hmm. that women simply cannot get through. Yes, um, does that theory exist in politics in Fiji? Absolutely. I mean, you, there, there are many glass ceilings and, you know, many positions, leadership positions, you know, if you want to achieve, you know, gender parity or gender equality, you've got to be able to involve men and women in equal, uh, you know, participation, especially in economic participation and also decision making. And, mm -hmm. the, and one of the biggest indicators is national decision making. And the only way to tell how women are participating in politics is their representation in Parliament. Yes. Now for Fiji, we've got 10 women. It's the highest it's ever been. So congratulations to all the women yes, that have made in. Absolutely. They've been able to, you know, to shatter the glass ceiling of uh, having uh, more men in Parliament. Now as we move towards hopefully 50%, yes. I know, uh, you know, it is it is what uh, Fiji needs. Uh, but how do you get to any. that 50%? Well, uh, again, it would take, uh, you know, Do we need to wait for the next elections? Well, it, need, it needs government policies and it needs legislative change to be able to recognize and to prop up women in leadership mm. positions. And you know, I mean, the, you know, the government has, uh, you know, three ministers who are women. Uh, one is a deputy minister. We yes, have, uh, you know, a deputy speaker. Uh, you know, we had the former speaker was uh, a first woman uh, yes, to be, uh, you know, she's the first woman to be a speaker. So, you know, we are we are challenging the status quo and breaking those glass ceilings mm. as we go along. And like you said, you know, Sodelpa having uh, a woman whip yes. uh, for the second time now, you know, holding onto that position. These are leadership uh, leadership positions, yes. excuse me, that um, that by propping up women and having this legislative change and having women in parliament uh, will then change public perception. Yes, but what you don't want though, Linda, I think is, um, you don't want them to have a minimum mm -hmm. or say that each, each in each policy there's in each area, there must be at least 25% of women working yes. or there must be about 50% of women. Mm -hmm. Do you not think that women should be, get into those roles yes. uh, based on performance? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we have countries in the Pacific that have uh, temporary special measures, uh, right. you know, like Samoa has uh, guaranteed seats for women. And right. even with that, they don't have any women right. in parliament, uh, you know, as a result. And it's, it's, it's unfortunate that mm. even though they have that temporary special measure to secure seats for women, women don't make it in. And right. so, uh, yes, there's no guarantee that women will get into parliament with uh, what you've just stated. So yes, it has to be in performance, but there are quite a lot of barriers that women face, you know, uh, getting involved in politics. Yes, I think, um, it, it, but that is changing, mm -hmm. and I think it has to go back to the home, uh, yes. where people in the household and in the immediate community yes. um, and immediate family yeah. have to be able to recognize that the woman is an equal yes. and she needs to be given an opportunity mm -hmm. where she can achieve those goals if she wants to go into politics. Well, the change has to come from government. I it, believe it, indeed, it takes a government well, yes. to, to change the laws and the policies to involve more women. And then the public perception will change when they see more women in parliament. And that's studies have proven that. And so, you know, what we need to do as um, a country, as a nation, is to support women that come into politics. And it doesn't just take the family, but it also takes a government, those leaders. It actually takes men. You know, and mm. uh, uh, you have men that support you. I've been so fortunate to have, uh, you know, uh, great leaders like uh, Felix Anthony and, uh, you know, current uh, leader of opposition, Sitiveni Rambuka, 
who have propped me up in leadership mm. positions, uh, you know, and, and they have been, and members of, uh, you know, of the People's Democratic Party, Daniel Urai, mm. Vijay Singh, Mark Anthony, mm. uh, Matthew Young, uh, you know, all men. Yes, and uh, not that to have forget you had a great that, father yes. as well. Yes, great and my father, father great indeed, family, and, yes. and, you know, and, and a great husband, so you and, had and the support me, yes. behind you. Because, and so uh, that, that's what it takes, yes. and, and we've got to have men that are, uh, advocate for women. Well, and, and believe equality. that women can do the job, yes, is most importantly. Yes. We'll be back <coughs> on that point, on point with Ellen Whippy Knight in just a tick. <laughs> Welcome back to On Point with Ellen Whippy Knight. And this evening, we've got Miss Linda Tambuya, who is our opposition whip and member of parliament, and we are talking about women in politics. Linda, just very quickly, I was watching a documentary. I was a reporter on uh, Women of the World. It was a conference that Hillary Clinton um, was talking on and presenting at, and she mentioned that politics needs women. Yes. And there were a number of reasons, but one of the most um, important reasons I thought, she said, is because we're able to show empathy, we're able to show sympathy, we are also multitasks, taskers, and we can do a number of things and put ourselves up in different levels there. You know, and then when you think about the world, huge political issues at the moment and the prime ministers that we've had, you know, remember the time in the 90s when we had Golda Meir, we had Margaret Thatcher, we had Indira Gandhi, and now in the you know, 2000s onwards, we've got people like um, Theresa May, You've certainly got one of the best at the moment is, is Jacinda. Yes. And, and you've met her. And then we've got people like you coming along on the line with the other women in politics as well. So do you think that that is a correct statement, that it will take women to change the world? I absolutely agree with her. It was also uh, a sentiment shared by the late Kofi Annan, the former yes. uh, Secretary General of the UN. All right, yes. Talking about the need for women participation in uh, sustainable development and that we need to have women uh, more and more now of course you know Jacinda Ardern has just been ranked as the second most effective world oh, leader absolutely you know that's and, and for her age and for someone the youngest female prime minister mm. in the history she was a prime minister at 37 mm. and so you know kudos to her and certainly someone I look up to mm. uh, yeah you know uh, you're right about that statement that you know for women uh, you know, we, it's something to do about being mothers and being yes. sisters and Nurturers. being daughters, uh, that we, you know, we have a natural instinct to nurture and that, uh, you know, generally women look out for the family. And so if a successful family is based on, you know, um, uh, as you say, the, a, a complete family to have a, a man and woman looking after the children, you have the benefit of both uh, parents looking after the family, uh, working together as a team, then why not nation building yes. where women and men can work yes. together, um, you know, 50%, uh, you know, in equal partnership. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we've seen the same with Rwanda. What an amazing right. story. Absolutely. Over 50% yes. now of women yes. in parliament. And the African nations with yes. women leaders. And the Nordic you know, countries, historically. Well, look, that, that's really interesting mm. because I was sort of looking, you know, doing some prep work for this. And, and it's amazing to notice that the Nordic nations in history were some of the most violent Vikings <laughs> and yet they allowed women yes. to lead them. Yes. Out of all of the nations in the world, the Nordic women, the Nordic countries had the most Nordic leaders to date. Yes. And now you've got the African nations taking yes. over. And I look at, I mean, look at Rwanda, they just had the, you know, the genocide in 1995 yes. 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 between the two, uh, you know, ethnic groups. And, uh, you know, they just, I guess they just got to a point where they were just tired of all of it. Absolutely. And there was a complete changeover to have women yes. uh, to lead in parliament. So, uh, you know, I think for Fiji, you know, certainly for yes. Fiji, uh, we can achieve more. Uh, you know, we are currently 20% um, of parliament. But Why has uh, it taken so long? You know, mm. uh, I just mentioned the Nordic countries. Yes. Um, and yes, of course, that's probably why the EU is, the, is there. All those um, peacekeeping type organizations yes. all evolved out of Europe. Yes. Why has it taken the Pacific nations so long to catch up? Look, I think we need to be, uh, you know, always aware of 
uh, our environment that we're in. Uh, we look at our culture and, uh, you know, patriarchy, which has been historically throughout the entire world, mm -hmm. uh, certainly uh, still holds a very big place in our culture. Uh, you know, men speak, men lead, the women do the work. Mm. Uh, look, it may very well be the kind of uh, translation into politics where uh, men and women uh, share uh, in equal participation in politics. Uh, it, it uh, you know, is sometimes seen as a Western concept, yes. as a foreign concept. Mm. But uh, again, coming back to having, voting more women into parliament, then when the public sees that women in, uh, are able to lead in parliament, then it will change the public yes. perception that women are able to lead and are just as capable mm. as men. And well, that's all what gender equality is about. It's not yes. about women trying to be better than men. It's just that women are able to participate equally yes. uh, and in I really, national development. I really don't think that um, a country can develop to its full extent um, if it doesn't have equal uh, gender, gender, gender equality, yes. as well as having more women yes. in parliament. Yes, correct. Which takes me back to you. Uh, you know, why did you go into politics? Really, Ellen, ever since I can remember, I've always right. wanted to be, you know, I, I grew up in poverty and I remember saying to myself when I, at such a very young age, that I do not want anyone else to grow up like I did. Right. Um, in the way that I was raised, and I would like to change things. Um, where can I go and where can I place myself where I can make decisions for the betterment of our people to fight poverty mm. and uh, to fight injustice mm. and really to be a voice for the voiceless and a help for the helpless. Yeah. And that's really my message today, Alan. I think that uh, uh, sums it up, that yeah. uh, as a woman participating in politics, we do need to rise above all mm. the petty politics. We need to rise above exactly the attacks. Right. We need to put the interests of our people first. Our constitution, the first three words of the constitution is we the people. Yeah. We need to give power back to our people. We need to have leaders right. that do that. So how can we encourage more women to, become into, to come into politics? Because i just say this very quickly. When I was five years old, living in Fiji, of course, my dad, who was a journalist, yes. um, Stan Ritorva, took a photograph of me in parliament. <laughs> And, um, and there I'm sitting there, and it was pu pu published in the papers, and it said that, you know, one day I'm going to sit in the seat. And I always thought I was going to become the first Prime Minister, female Prime Minister. Fiji. There's still time, Ellen. And, well, yes, there is, there is time, but I'm not quite sure whether it's in this generation. And, <laughs> but, but what do you think we need to take, do to encourage more women into politics? And do you see yourself, as much as your voters would like to as well, see yourself as being the first female Prime Minister of Fiji? If it is the will of the people, I need to be ready to, uh, you know, to uh, to take up that mantle. You know, you've, it's been a dream of yours, uh, you know, and uh, like I said, Ellen, there's still time for you to come into politics. So it just takes women who are already in parliament to invite more women, to show them the way that, you know, it can be done. You can balance work in parliament with your family, yes. uh, with your community work, uh, with uh, you know, uh, your church obligations or other activities that you're involved in. Uh, you, can, you can balance all of that. Like you said, women multitask. Yes. And being in parliament is no different. Right. Uh, every woman has uh, the ability to be able to lead and be able to show other mm -hmm. women the way. And that's the challenge for me and that's my hope for yes. Fiji, that as I am in Parliament now, I will be able to encourage more women uh, to come into uh, politics, to be able to participate equally in uh, national decision making. Right. Well, Linda, you know, good luck for that because it okay. is rather challenging times, um, you know, and we want to see a change in terms of women being able to take over or get into more roles that will encourage the development of the people and the country in totality, yes. as opposed to just having a job, having taking on a role because she's a woman. Yes. And I believe the time is coming soon. Yes. Um, you know, there's so many more women in management positions yes. in corporate uh, industries in Fiji. There's so many more women being outspoken and standing and coming out of their comfort zone. Yes. Um, you know, you're you're a great leader in that area, and I think you're doing very well. You're a really great mentor for younger women. Thank you. And I, you know encourage you to continue and who knows that one day you could possibly be the uh, first female Prime Minister of Fiji. There you go. God wills.
Thank you very much for listening to us tonight and to Linda uh, Tamboya, our Honourable Opposition Whip and Member of Parliament. We thank you very much for your time. We wish you good luck in your next ventures. And we want to see you back on point with Ellen Whippy Knight next Monday. Talk to you soon.